Welcome to the module on durability of concrete. In this module, we will talk about the salt crystallization in a specific. What is a salt crystallization? Salt crystallization is a, a process in the concrete which will be affected because of the presence of salt inside the concrete. Because of the presence of salt, a surface scaling of concrete is observed due to the crystallization process. In the process of crystallization, the change in volume takes place which exerts a pressure on top of the concrete and this pressure is good enough to develop surface scaling on top of the concrete. The salts present on concrete as efflorescents or subflorescents are usually highly soluble in water and will lead to cracking of uh, concrete because of the differential uh, pressures being developed. If you see the presence of uh, if you see the presence of salt in uh, if, if you see the presence of salt in uh, concrete, the most common uh, efflorescent materials is anhydrous sodium sulfate and hydrous uh, sodium sulfate. Anhydrous sodium sulfate is in the form of Na2SO4 and hydrous sodium sulfate is available in the form of Na2SO4 times 10 H2O. Similar to the natural rock formations like limestone, porous concretes are susceptible to weathering caused by salt crystallization. These salts may or may not contain sulfate and they may or may not react with the hydrated compounds in concrete, thereby developing a defects in terms of scaling on top of the concrete. Groundwater enters the concrete by capillary action and the diffusion, which is evident as seen in the photographs. When pore water evaporates above ground concrete surfaces, the salt concentrates until it crystallizes, sometimes generating pressure large enough to cause a cracking as shown in the photograph. The formation of salt, then generation of pressure because of the change in volume in forming a crystal and then those differential pressures are, are will be large enough to generate cracking on top of the surface. So if you see a cracking, probably it will be an impact or an effect of salt crystallization in the concrete. So a typical uh, cycle of uh, crystallization if you see in general, you have an impure solid which is dissolved in a solvent, you can stir it completely to dissolve the solid into the solvent and then try to evaporate it to the dryness using some external source of uh, heating elements. You can pour that uh, liquid in an evaporating dish and allow it to dry until you see the formation of the crystals. The solution is heated to evaporate most of the solvent to turn the process to evaporation to dryness. You can further continue heating until the salt is obtained. The hot solution is allowed to cool. The solids will appear as cool crystals in top of the evaporation dish. See the cold solution is poured off to obtain the crystals. The crystals can be dried and be by pressing them between sheet of filter papers. And these are the crystal formations which is large enough to occupy the volume a bigger volume in concrete, thereby leading to cracking of concrete. So the ideal uh, way to prevent uh, damage by salt crystallization is to prevent the salt or the lead and water from entering into the concrete. So one way to do that is to increase the permeability or the increase the density of the concrete by improving the water cement ratio by increasing the fines, you can improve the quality of the concrete in terms of uh, the permeability, 
in terms of the densification of the concrete, in terms of the minimization of uh, voids in the concrete. So this will help you to restrict the movement of salt or you can prevent the movement of salt or the salt water inside the concrete portions. The second method is you can have a coating on the concrete surface or placement of a plastic sheathing beneath slabs which will help you to restrict the salt solutions to penetrate because of the capillary action through the ground. So the, the preventive measures if you see there are two preventive methods basically adopted. One is you can improve the quality of the concrete so that you can restrict or prevent the salt water entering into the concrete. That can be done by improving the density of the concrete, by minimizing the voids in the concrete, by improving the permeability of the concrete. And the second method is the coating on top of the concrete surface or wrapping it with a plastic sheathing beneath the slab to avoid or to prevent the movement of the salt inside the concrete. Any measures that reduces the permeability of the concrete such as a lower water cement ratio, use of SCM that is supplementary cementitious materials or in, we can say mainly use of mineral admixtures which can be a fly ash, which can be your silica fumes, GGBFS particles, rices, all those things. And good curing will also have a great impact to reduce the vulnerability of the concrete to salt crystallization damages. Salt crystallization is more severe at locations where the concrete is exposed to alternate wetting and drying cycles. It is the continual or when it is with continuously wet exposures. Generally in the sea conditions, typically in the tidal zones where you have the alternate wetting and uh, dry, alternate wetting and drying conditions cycles because of the high tide and the low tide, you get the salts as well as you get the other ingredients which will help the movement of the salt crystals inside the concrete. So specifically for the tidal zone under the marine environment, the tidal zone is being taken care of with extra precaution by giving preventive coatings in order to restrict the movement of the salt inside the concrete, thereby reducing or eliminating the damage at that particular location because of the salt crystallization. So to summarize this module, we talked about the definition of salt crystallization. We talked about the factors that are leading to salt crystallization of concrete and the effect of the salt crystallization and how do we overcome the issues related to salt crystallization. That is, Precautions required to prevent salt crystallization in the concrete can be you can lower your water cement ratio of the concrete, you can increase the grade of the concrete, you can use the supplementary cementitious materials in order to make sure that the voids will become minimum and the density of the concrete thus produced will be thicker and compacted. And then a good curing arrangement, the effective curing arrangement to cure the concrete will help to reduce the impact of salt crystallization. So in the next module, we will be covering the freeze and thaw under the durability sections. Till then, thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Do tune in for more updates.